Hello, good people. Welcome to our show. Hello, bad people. Welcome to our show. Hello, anyone who wanna learn more about LinkedIn ads. Welcome. Today we are going to discuss how you can get results, how you can get sales by using LinkedIn ads. I'm so excited to discuss this topic with Jay Wilcox. How are you? I'm doing so awesome. Thanks so much for having me, Anatoly. I'm just absolutely flattered to be here. Yeah, big pleasure. I remember all your valuable bombs that you shared on my podcast two times, you know. So I love this experience. I learn a lot. You usually lead me to an emergency room where, where I need to spend time <laughs> to consume all these bombs, you know. <laughs> so, AJ, before we start, just tell more about your self-experience, background, and anything that can help our new listeners to learn more about you because old listeners know about you. <laughs> For sure. Uh, so my background, I was an SEO guy and uh, and into Google ads. I, I went to go work for a company this is kind of in a past life. Uh, it was a pre-IPO SaaS company and I was the first digital marketer. And I laid out my strategy to my new boss, the CMO, everything I wanted to do with, with SEO and with Google ads. And I remember her saying, all that sounds great. Go ahead and execute it. Uh, but just so you know, we started a pilot using LinkedIn ads about two weeks ago. So see what you can do. And I didn't want to look stupid to my new boss. So I saluted and said, yes, ma'am. And went and jumped into LinkedIn ads, started trying to figure it out. And a few weeks later, I had a sales rep who came to introduce himself and said, AJ, we are fighting over your leads. Whatever you're doing, keep it up. And I went, I don't know what you're talking about. So I logged into our CRM, which was Salesforce at the time, and uh, started looking at and analyzing these leads. And everyone that the sales rep mentioned came from LinkedIn ads, not any other channel that I was using. And it was at that point where I went, oh, there's something here that I didn't realize before. And I ended up over the next two and a half years, um, fully investing in LinkedIn. I, I got to the point where this was LinkedIn's largest spending account in the world. Um, I ran that for two and a half years. And after that, I went, okay, there has to be uh, more companies than just this one that need LinkedIn ads help. And so this was back in 2014, I started B2 Linked and we're an ad agency that LinkedIn ads is all we do. Um, based here in the US in the state of Utah, we have 13 employees. Uh, so still very small and nimble by, by most standards, I think, uh, but hyper specialized in LinkedIn ads. It's my favorite topic on the planet. Yeah, yeah, love it, love it. Awesome, awesome experience. I wanna ask from uh, something that I often get, uh, that some companies can fail with LinkedIn ads and even great experts. Uh, I know some of them, uh, real well-known experts, uh, and uh, some of them shared with me, they spent like five figures on LinkedIn ads to get zero leads, you know? So uh, it, it probably it doesn't work for anyone. Probably something was wrong because these experts uh, are great. They know their stuff, uh, create, and yeah, they tried and failed. So can you tell uh, how to figure out if it works for you or uh, without spending five uh, numbers? And yeah, any tips about that? <laughs> Definitely. So the same thing happens to me. I'm a very experienced marketer at this point. I've been doing this for, I think, 16, 17 years. Um, and every new ad platform I try to pick up, I do stupid stuff or I do things that the platform uh, just, it doesn't work. And so uh, the first time I launched a Facebook ad, same thing. First time I launched a TikTok ad, same thing. So uh, no matter how expert you are, every ad platform really needs its own little bit of finessing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll say the big issues with LinkedIn are, first of all, the reason we come to LinkedIn ads is the targeting. We know it's an expensive platform. It's, it's, we pay a premium to advertise. There is no reason to come to LinkedIn unless their targeting is exactly what you need to reach your, your ideal buyer. So for instance, if you're trying to reach like, um, let's say uh, women between the ages of 35 and 55, like, yeah, you can target them using LinkedIn ads, but it would be so much less expensive to do it on Meta, uh, on even Google. Like th there are cheaper ways to do it. So the reason we come to LinkedIn is this ability to target by someone's job title, their level of seniority, their company name. Uh, we just get so crazy ninja about who someone is usually in business to business. So 
number one, like your audience has to be there in a way that you can't reach them anywhere else for LinkedIn mm-hmm. to be an ultra successful channel. I think the next one is realizing that because people are surfing around on LinkedIn, when they see your ad, it doesn't mean they're ready to buy from you. Uh, if you show an ad that says like, Hey, get a demo here, talk to sales, buy something. And this is a cold audience. Who's never heard of you before. Of course, they're going to go, no, why would I do that? Uh, but there are some people who are curious enough. They might actually click on that ad. So you're going to pay money, but get zero leads. You might pay a lot of money, maybe even five figures and get nothing out of it. And that's sad. So you really do have to show value first to these audiences and get them to know, like, and then trust you. And that's when they're going to be ready to actually make a purchase. That's when you can show an ad that says, get a demo, talk to our sales team. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about how to share value first? I mean, like we need to create content that can help to teach, educate, or uh, any other way how to do it. I mean, like to share value first. Yeah, there are a lot of different ways that we can share value. Um, One way that I like doing, I love video ads right now because Mm -hmm. you could read five of my guides or five of my eBooks and still not actually have an emotional connection with me. You know, you could spend hours reading the written word and not feel like, you know, like, or trust me, but I could be on video. I mean, we've been on here for five minutes or so, and you may already feel like, you know, me a little bit. You may feel like you, you like me because I'm helping share information. That's going to help you. And there might even be a little bit of a trust factor built up. So I think video ads are so powerful that way you can communicate so much more value. So I love the idea of in short video clips, uh, teaching them something to, teach them about uh, how to do uh, something in their job better, how to uh, solve a a pain point they have. The stronger the pain point, we call it the bleeding neck, uh, the the more effective it's going to be at getting their attention. But when someone sees that you're giving them value and not asking for anything, they're going to like you faster. They're going to start to trust you faster. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Uh, Let's talk about video content uh, or video paid ads. Uh, I remember Gary V, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk uh, uh, shared about that. I mean, like uh, he got a few big companies uh, um, and these companies uh, shared with him that they spent like million dollars in TV advertising and he uh, asked them to try Facebook ads with video content and uh, some of them tried and failed and he replied it's not because uh, it doesn't work it means we need to play with creativity to uh, film many different video formats to find the way and that way it works so can you tell how to be creative how to become creative in video because you mentioned about video paid ads so any tips about that (laughs) Yeah, it's so hard uh, because we had asked a lot about like, oh, should I run video ads? And there's a lot of questions that I have to ask, like uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, You could describe the video to me. You could say, oh, we want to do a talking head video where I'm teaching about a certain topic. And even that way, executed properly, it could be great. And executed poorly, you could get zero out of it and just walk away with the conclusion that LinkedIn ads didn't work or LinkedIn ads, LinkedIn video ads didn't work. And it all comes down to the execution. So here are some tips that I can give you on how to execute really well with, with LinkedIn video ads. First off, LinkedIn counts it as a view as soon as someone has watched two seconds of your video. So just think about it when you're on your feed and you're scrolling down it would be pretty easy to dwell on something for two seconds and have LinkedIn tell the advertiser, hey, someone watched this, someone viewed, but it didn't have very much of your attention. So LinkedIn's going to charge the advertiser once you get two seconds viewed, but someone is probably still in the process of scrolling. You haven't got their attention. They may not continue watching. So what I like to do is make sure in that first two seconds, there's action, there's movement, there's something that's going to catch their attention. And because you've already paid for them at two seconds, you might as well actually give them a reason to keep to keep looking. Um, subtitles are a big deal because when someone mm-hmm. is, uh, 
watching or they're scrolling through the feed on, on LinkedIn, 75% of them are going to watch without the sound on. So you can imagine if I'm a talking head <laughs> and that's all you see, you're not going to get anything out of my video. But if I have captions uh, and usually yeah. animated captions are my favorite. Um, but if I have captions at the bottom of the screen that are burned into the video, um, even people who watch with the sound off, that's three fourths of people are going to still get the message. I think those are the two biggest tips I have. The third being like, try to keep it short. People on LinkedIn don't want to watch something that's, you know, over a minute. I, I try to keep it under a minute if I can. And that's the best way to get people's attention so that they'll actually see the value that you're going to drop. Yeah. You know, uh, if I open my TikTok, I usually watch like this, you know, <laughs> so I can do it for less than a second, you know, to, to keep watching. It's important. And can you tell more about how to hook this attention for users like me, customers like me, who uh, are impatient to get what they want to get? And according to some data, I don't remember exactly uh, the numbers, it's like 80% of users skip watching video content on YouTube uh, in the first 20 seconds. So it's important yeah. to hook attention. Tell more about that. <laughs> yeah. So when I go to record video, my natural reaction is to introduce myself and say, hi, I'm AJ Wilcox. Today, yeah. we're going to be talking about how to do this. And, yeah. uh, and I might try to list some example or social proof saying, this is why you should listen to me. All of that. I mean, that could be 20 seconds long and someone's going to go, I'm bored. I don't care about who you are yeah. until I know what you can do for me. Um, so in that first two seconds, what I like to do, I like to take the juiciest sound bite from the whole video and put it right at the beginning. So mm -hmm. immediately when they're watching, there's the biggest thing you need to know about LinkedIn ads is this. And then I get into the real video. I, I might break it up with a small logo, um, a little bit of music break or something, but my goal is as fast as possible to let you know what it is I'm going to actually help you out with. And then if they know, like it, we see this all the time on YouTube to uh, videos that have a little a teaser or a hook um, that's from the middle, you probably want to go back and watch all the way until you see why this guy got his head stuck in a jar or, you know, something like that. Use the same thing with your video ads, juicy a sound bite first, and then start the video and probably cut right to the point. Don't have the, hi, I'm AJ Wilcox. And this is, I'm from this company. And this is what I do. Cut all of that. Just immediately start with, uh, here's how to, here's your top three ways to have success on LinkedIn ads. That's it. And start talking. Nice. Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, I often review LinkedIn accounts and many of them are selfish. You know, people don't care about customers. They don't care how to help others. They want to highlight how they're great. Nobody cares. No customers yes. want to become great. You need to make the, your customers great and to show the way how you can do it. And can you tell it's important to have uh, brand recognition before uh, starting uh, paid ads because uh, people distrust uh, companies that, I don't know if companies have no followers or uh, a lot of followers. Uh, so it's important to have some recognition before pay that or not. It absolutely is. Um, especially in the news feed. That's the majority of the ads on LinkedIn. Um, anytime your company shows up, there's going to be three things, the company logo, the company name, and the number of followers. So mm -hmm. you can imagine if you're scrolling through and you see an ad that catches your attention, you go, oh, that seems interesting. Like maybe they know what they're talking about. And then your eye drifts to the upper left-hand corner and you see that they the page has 32 followers. You're going to go, ooh, do I really trust them? They may not know what they're talking about. Every page has to start with zero followers. That's just the way it is. Um, but we as humans, we're looking for those social proof signals to see, like, is this safe? Are other people doing this too? Or am I the, only, am I the first person to try this software out or the first person I may not be interested in, in being the first one. I want to be the 3000th person after everyone else has already proven it out. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's that recognition. It's like your brand may only have 32 followers. Well, there are a couple things you can do. Number one, you can get all of your, your company page admins to start inviting their connections to follow the company. 
It's right mm -hmm. within the, the company page interface. This is fairly recent in the last year or two that we've gotten this. And you can send invitations asking your connections who are in that industry, hey, come follow this company page. That's a way of getting it up very quickly. The other thing you can do is actually run follower ads on LinkedIn. But we see in North America, we get down to like $8 per follow. It's still kind of expensive for a follow. Um, so I'd rather do it organically for free. Yeah, nice, nice. I I spoke with a few, uh, not a few, with many experts on Google ads, on Facebook ads, but uh, not a lot of them pay attention to LinkedIn ads. And uh, I ask why. And uh, the main question, I mean, like the main reply uh, that uh, it's not enough settings to set up a buying persona. Uh, for me, it's weird because on LinkedIn, you can check the title, you can check uh, many things, but people still uh, get, I mean, like don't get enough data. Can you tell how to overcome this obstacle? I mean, like if you set up it as on LinkedIn. Yeah, I think as an advertiser, I'm personally repelled right now away from Google. Like I don't want to learn more about Google ads and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time there because they have settings and then they're starting to take them away. So mm. I, as a marketer, I now have fewer levers and buttons that I can push to have my effect on things that they've taken away options. Um, LinkedIn is exactly the opposite. Like while Facebook and Google were having their day in the sun, uh, very, very popular platforms, they were like, they, they were the de facto. Like when you learn digital marketing, you're gonna pick up one or both of those platforms. You're gonna learn Facebook ads, you're gonna learn Google ads. Um, LinkedIn started out like uh, actually before Facebook ads. So LinkedIn's been around longer, but LinkedIn has always made 60% of its revenue from selling recruiter licenses to recruiters. Mm -hmm. So LinkedIn looked at it and said, well, there's this new ad product that we could uh, give engineers to, we could give resources to, uh, but no, this is where we're making all our money. Let's, let's throw all of it there. So for the longest time, us marketers, we looked at LinkedIn ads and it was missing all of the table stakes that you expect an ad platform to have. We didn't get conversion tracking until 2017, uh, mm -hmm. which I know it's been a while, but for me who was advertising since 2011, I was going, please give me conversion tracking. Like I could code this myself, uh, you know, with, with enough time and, and figuring it out. And so they were, they were missing a lot of, of opportunities that advertisers rely on. Well, now in just the last four or five years, LinkedIn has really stepped on the gas. They've given resources. They have a whole like giant development team who's always building new features. And so now I think if those experts went back and, and came to look at LinkedIn again, they'd probably go, oh, it has most of the stuff that I need. It's still missing things like, like day parting and ad scheduling. That's kind of embarrassing. Um, still uh, like accurate frequency, um, the ability to analyze by hour of the day. I mean, there are some things that you can do on other platforms that you can't do on LinkedIn, but most of the way LinkedIn's caught up and I definitely think it's worth a look. Yeah, nice, awesome, valuable. AJ, I wanna ask about the tool that I use a lot that was simple to ignore, hard today, impossible tomorrow about AI, it's interesting because I speak with this tool more often than with my wife. <laughs> <I don't know>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm addictive to this tool, you know, because this tool can help me to create great content. And we got mentioned on CNN, uh, Business Insider, because of editing some content with ChatGPT. Uh, wow. And uh, it's interesting about AI. Uh, uh, no, uh, Microsoft uh, owns uh, LinkedIn uh, and uh, Microsoft, I don't know, has some power with open AI. Uh, I don't know about what kind of power, but uh, Microsoft invests a lot. Big of money. investor, yeah. Yeah, big investor. Okay, let's talk like that. And uh, can you tell how AI can help today on LinkedIn, especially in paid ads? Uh, because uh, I checked uh, some data news that uh, LinkedIn uh, implements AI features uh, and yeah, any tips about that? <laughs> yeah, the, I, I think anytime we talk about AI, this conversation comes up like, 
oh, are we as ad managers and marketers, are we going to lose our job to AI? And uh, I think it's it's very safe to say, no, we won't. And for this exact reason. So right now we have two tools in in with AI in LinkedIn ads that you can use. Um, the, the first is actually within LinkedIn's campaign manager. Mm-hmm. There's a little bubble that pops up when you're writing ad copy and it'll say something like, do you want help writing your ad copy? That's chat GPT, probably chat GPT four, um, that it's programmed with some prompts on the back end to know how to like what the character constraints of an ad are, and it can make suggestions for you. So that's super cool. That's probably two months old. And I think it was LinkedIn's like first foray into, um, into implementing AI in the ad platform. The other one is like, sure. Now we have help with the ad copy, the the text, um, but we're going to need help with visuals. I don't think this is very far off, but I do think that us as marketers, we can very easily go into things like mid journey or Dolly and, and ask it to create a visual for us that we can then take and, and quickly put into LinkedIn ads. I would not be surprised if at some point uh, LinkedIn has that built in, like uh, maybe mid journey or maybe uh I can't remember if, if Dolly is owned by OpenAI. AI. It, yeah, it is. So it, it probably is going to be a Dolly prompt, um, but I think that's going to help mm-hmm. from the, the perspective of us as ad managers. We're not going to lose our jobs to this because uh, it will help us create ads, but it won't at this point actually manage the ads for us. Um, we need to be in the ad platform looking for, okay, this ad won, this one lost. We want to keep, running this one. This one needs to be done and, and cut. Um, this one's performing well. This one's not. Every ad platform, uh, you know, especially you look at Google for this, they keep trying to have AI do more and more, making suggestions. But I haven't found a case yet, and I'm sure Google's moving very fast, but I haven't found a case yet where AI was making better decisions in the ad account than I was by myself. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And, um, uh, you, you know, I disagree with common thinking that AI, uh, is not replacing human beings because we still another picture, <laughs> for example, uh, some companies can fire writers and, um, uh, for example, in my company, uh, we stop cooperating with, uh, translators and editors because ChatGPT can provide a much better wow. and faster job. And, uh, for example, we edit a lot of content on chat GPT. We translate, we got traffic from Japanese websites because of chat GPT, this tool can provide a good job. And uh, I think if you want to, uh, have your job or even improve your job, you need to consider AI today. You need to jump on this tool because, uh, even great writers who can beat chat GPT, because for example, I'm terrible writer, chat GPT can beat me in one side, you know, but if you are a great writer and can beat chat GPT today, it doesn't mean you can beat tomorrow. Uh, so and, true. Yeah. And you need, and by the way, if you want to become a great prompt expert, you need to have skills, how to g- create great content because uh, all prompt experts can edit and understand the quality if they have experience with that. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that is why I recommend to anyone to think how to adapt, how to go ahead with ChatGPT or any other AI tool because ChatGPT is the best today. Uh, and I want to ask about creativity. You know, uh, in marketing, it's very important to be creative, to become creative, because if you create generic content, you can't get results, you can't win attention. But most content creators complain that ChatGPT is just a rewriting tool. So can you tell how to become creative to create great pet ads that can win attention? (laughs) Yes. And I have great, uh, great news for you on this front. Um, Mm -hmm. if, if I were trying to stand out for, uh, a a mobile app, like a mobile game or in retail, um, in e-commerce, that would be so hard for me because there's so many people being so creative, but with LinkedIn, the vast majority of advertisers are being the equivalent of buttoned up with a tie and they, they won't take risks for their brand. They're like, Ooh, professional platform. We need to look professional. And so all it takes right now to stand out and, you know, 
your mileage may vary here, but all it really takes to stand out on LinkedIn is to be personal, to be authentic, uh, to make more of a personal connection. And so your ad stands out in a sea of stock photos of people in suits. Uh, yours is doing something different. Yours is bright colored. And so it's really not that hard in B2B right now to be creative because most people are doing it, like playing it safe. So I think that's my, my first thought is, you may have to convince your marketing department. You may have to convince your CEO, please let us break brand guidelines a little bit to stand out because I promise you it's worth it. It's worth it to because we pay such a high price to get someone's attention on LinkedIn. But once we have it, then we can market to them on other platforms for a lot less money. Uh, it, it becomes much more effective, but we need to get their attention. The best way to do it is to not play it safe. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think you need to break the rules, <laughs> policy, anything. <laughs> because, you know, if you have some limits, I don't know how you can be creative, become creative because competitors can replicate your old message. You need to create something new. And uh, it's internet. Everyone is stealing <laughs> here, you know, like thousand other marketers can tell, uh, take your content to replicate, to show another side and yeah it's important to be creative and i remember when uh, gary v said about that uh, if someone stealing his content and many people can steal his content uh, he told uh, the best way what he can do to create more content new content <laughs> more creative content and he doesn't care if someone is stealing because uh, he has no time to fight to show that was stealing, but he has time to create something new, you know, to overcome them. So, yeah. And Absolutely. Yeah, awesome. And I okay. feel that same way. When you are plowing forward, when you keep creating, uh, other people can't keep up. And that's by far the best thing you can do as a marketer. Like, don't worry about people ripping your stuff off. People will notice, uh, but you keep getting better and better while they keep learning from tests that you did in the past. I think that's great advice. Nice, nice. AJ, I checked on your LinkedIn profile that you handle, uh, manage marketing campaigns, uh, $150 million. Oh, yeah. for me, it's crazy money. I, yeah. I have no idea how to do it. <laughs> Can you tell how to do it? I mean, like if you have different campaigns, businesses, and you need to be productive to print results, tell how to manage such campaigns. <laughs> yeah. So much of that comes from very large spenders, like enterprise level clients, mm -hmm. uh, which is great. We absolutely love working with, with enterprise companies. Uh, we also love working with small companies who uh, it, there's less red tape, less bureaucracy, um, fewer brand guidelines, things like that. Cause we can launch faster and we can be a little bit more creative. So I, I love that. But in talking about like, how you actually manage large, large budgets, um, there is certainly a strategy to it. Like I would not build an account the same way um, to that I knew that was going to have 10 campaigns um, compared to one that I knew needed a thousand campaigns. Uh, it's th there's a whole different structure. So, so I would implement that and I'm, I'm more than happy to like give details on, on that structure that we recommend. But I would also say, uh, if you are used to managing accounts with, let's say four figures, it's, it's, you know, $4,000 a month. Um, if all of a sudden your company comes to you and says, Hey, we have 10 X your budget. So now you have $40,000. You're not going to do all that much differently. Like it's all the same thing with just one more zero at the end. So what it does give you the ability to do is uh, get results from your tests faster. So when I have data coming in 10 times faster, I don't have to wait till the end of the month to evaluate an AB test. I can do it after three or four days and get the same amount of data. And I can run more statistically significant tests. I can run three or four tests at a time because I have data coming in faster. So don't be daunted by, by big spends. As long as your account is set up in a way that, that you've minimized waste on four figures a month, when it turns into five or six uh, or seven, even it's all the same process. It's just any waste that you have gets amplified. You're wasting more, but if it's a clean, uh, a clean setup of an account, 
um, it's tightly run, then you start adding zeros onto the end and you just get data faster. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. I usually help a lot with organic reach in SEO, LinkedIn, uh, various marketing campaigns, but it's organic reach. And I want to confess, we can get results with most of our content. Uh, it's okay. It's part of the game because uh, we are not alone. We have competitors <laughs> who might be smarter in some campaigns. And uh, you mentioned many times about testing, you know, how to test, how to analyze. But in organic reach, it costs like to create content. But with paid ads, it's not. <laughs> you need to pay, especially if you are talking about LinkedIn. Can you tell how to experiment and test without losing a lot of money? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that really is the key that if um, in paid social, when we put money on something to amplify it, uh, you're, you're taking the energy or the fire that was there and you're just pouring fuel on it or you're just adding more energy to, to reach more people. So if what you have is not interesting, uh, this is actually a principle that I learned from Dennis Yu, the, the Facebook ads guy. Um, if you have something that's not interesting, it's there's no fire there or it's just a little match. If you pour gas on it, it's probably gonna put the fire out rather than make it bigger. So in order to, to test, like what do I actually have that gets people attention, uh, to get people's attention, you can test it organically. Like you said, it costs nothing to do. And uh, if I have, let's say I, I post five times this week, one of those posts got 15 comments. And if I look at the views, I got more views than I have followers that went viral. That's a clue to me that like, oh, maybe I, maybe this would make a good ad, or maybe I hit a nerve with this content. Maybe I can go and create more kinds of ads or more things to offer around this topic. And because of course you could put ad money behind all five of those posts and spend $300 and find out that that four of the five were bad and, and no one wanted to interact with them. Uh, but in the way we did it before, we figured out based off of just the, the organic performance. And now we, we know we can put that full three or $400 or something behind the best performing post. I, I think that's really the key is test organically. If you have an organic audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And tell uh, what kind of content can you post on LinkedIn? Uh, and what is the main difference between posting on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, I don't know, any other platforms? Uh, because LinkedIn audience is business oriented, but I, I don't think it's a good idea to limit your possibilities with some common thinking. Uh, so any tips about posting content that will get engagement? <laughs> yeah, I, I think initially we have to talk about what kinds of posts you can create. Mm -hmm. and. I would say if you're used to Facebook, they're very similar. We can create a text only post or a single image post. Um, you can do, and this is personally, like you and I on our personal profiles, we can do a poll where we ask questions and get votes. Um, we can do a document post where someone can flip through different panes and read a document if it's a, a PowerPoint presentation or a PDF. Um, lots of different ways that your, your content can be formatted. I don't think that there's any rule about which one of those gets more attention than others. I, I know statistically, data-wise, there are some posts that, that get more attention, um, but more often than not, it's the content, it's what you post, because LinkedIn is the easiest network in the world to go viral on. I, with a, a small caveat, if you're underage and look good in a swimsuit, then great. TikTok's for you. You can go super yeah. viral. I do not look good in a swimsuit. Uh, so LinkedIn is, is the easiest for me, but it's all hinged off of one thing. And that is comments. If you post something and no one comments, then LinkedIn looks at it and goes, Oh, I'm going to give you a few impressions and I'm going to stop showing this. Um, whereas as soon as people start commenting, LinkedIn goes, ah, there's actual conversation going on here. There's something of interest. I'm going to take this post and start putting it in a whole bunch of other people's feeds. And we see this quite regularly. Someone who has 500 connections 
when you post, you can, you can quite easily get a thousand or 1500 views and you go, well, how is that? How are more people seeing this than even follow me? The answer is LinkedIn is distributing your post and helping it to go viral because you were getting people to comment. So whatever post style you do, whatever you decide to put up, think through the fact of like, okay, when someone sees this post, what is going to make them want to hit that comment button and type something that has to be your driving force. Wow. Nice. Nice. Uh, can you tell more how to encourage people to comment? Because uh, I see when content creators can create valuable content, interesting content, but people don't comment. So how to encourage them to leave a uh, comment, opinion, anything? <laughs> yeah, this is especially hard when you are commenting or, or posting as the company, because anytime there's a company page post, no one comments, or if they do, it's very rare, or they have to be very upset at the company to comment. Like mm -hmm. comments just don't happen as the company, but as an individual, it's actually quite, uh, quite a bit easier to get people to comment. Um, I think asking a question in your post, if you're saying like, yeah. help me out here, help me settle a bet. Here's a question for you. you know, starting the post, like something like that, you're going to get people primed and ready that that's what they're supposed to do is you want them to weigh in. If you do a poll, um, people feel very comfortable just clicking the choice that they want, uh, that they're voting for. And each one of those clicks kind of counts like a, like a comment. So a, a lot of times you get a lot of the same response from, from having a poll, um, asking a question at the end or inviting people to tag someone that can be another way. Um, but more often than not, if you're just starting out on LinkedIn and no one knows you, you have a, a very small network, or maybe this isn't your first, like your first try at LinkedIn, but you just haven't spent a whole lot of time working on your network to grow it. I think the best thing you can do is go out and comment and like, and interact with other people's posts. And then the next time they see you post, they feel indebted to you. They, they feel like, Oh, Anatoly did me a favor. So I'm going to go and do him a favor now and, and comment on his stuff. And what you end up doing is creating fans, people who like, they feel like they owe you something and all because of this, like, uh, reciprocity feeling yeah. of like he did something for me. So I'm going to do something for him or her. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I agree. I remember this reciprocity rule. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> When you help, help someone, uh, it creates, uh, uh, a feeling of guilty to give something back, you know? So yeah, it works. And according to some studies, if you reply to your comments, uh, then, uh you can increase the chance of getting new comments in six times it's a lot so oh yeah yeah just reply to comments uh to be authentic uh don't write like thank you for your comment it doesn't work you, you need to uh to reply something meaningful and to find time to do it because yes. i know some people can complain i have no time okay you have no time to grow your business then. <laughs> so yeah I, I was actually, I was talking to the head of LinkedIn's company pages and mm -hmm. I, I asked her about the algorithm. I was like, okay, I, I know you can't tell me much, but can you tell me like, what is it that LinkedIn cares most about? And she said, I'm trying to remember what she said. Oh, she said, the thing we care most about is comment density. Mm -hmm. And I had her explain, okay, what do you mean by comment density? That means if, if 15 people comment on your post, you look at that and go, Ooh, 15 comments, this post did great. But if every one of them is like, good job, way to go, bro, nice. And you respond, thanks. That comment density is like one, one short comment, one short reply, and that's it. There's no conversation happening. Yeah. So what LinkedIn cares about is if your reply is like, thanks, this was super meaningful to me when I learned it. What have you learned or how has this helped you? And then they respond with their experience. Now you have... Uh, a layer or, or say four or five layers deep of comments and LinkedIn's going to look at that and go, Ooh, even if it's the same 15 comments, these are 15 deep rather than wide. Yeah. And LinkedIn's going to go, Ooh, let's make this post go more viral. So you're right to your point. The more that you're actually interacting and being meaningful and having real conversation, that's going to help your posts out so much. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Because I think 
users read comments and if you read comments where uh, someone posts thank you welcome <laughs> nobody cares about these comments but exactly. if you see a real conversation yeah you can uh, I, I love reading conversations on uh gary v posts uh, because uh, all of them are authentic you know real and aj i have my final question about the future i want to ask you take your crystal ball and let us know what kind of future will be because many things are coming technologies are coming fast uh, apple is going to launch this headset i don't know augmented reality will come uh, so let us know what kind of future will be in your vision and how we can adapt to this possible future um i mean in, in a very short term like my world so much revolves around the linkedin ads platform and so mm -hmm. i'm i'm constantly watching what they're doing we are linkedin partners so i am privy to to some knowledge that I can't share publicly, but that's my focus is like, where is LinkedIn ads gonna be in four years? And a really simple answer, if that's your question, is uh, it's where Facebook is now. What LinkedIn does is they wait until Facebook launches a feature, they see if it's successful, and if it's successful, they usually launch it about four years later. So if you're curious mm -hmm. about LinkedIn ads, look at Facebook ads now, and, and it's probably gonna be pretty similar. Um, I do think in the wider future, I think we're, this isn't thinking very wide at all, but like, I, I love your points about AI. Uh, I think we're going to get to a point where AI is in everything. It's, it's pervasive. Um, AI is going to be assisting us with everything. I already use like Google assistant so much in what I do. Um, I, um, I ask it questions and like, the same thing with Siri, same thing, like all of them, they're really bad right now. They're, they're good at understanding a few things, but they're very bad at learning. Like when I ask the same thing all the time and they mess it up, I'm like, how did you mess that up? I've asked the same thing, you know, 300 times in the past. Uh, AI is going to get to a point where digital assistants, they learn how to assist us better than, way better than they are right now. Um, we're going to have every tool we need to help us write ad copy, to, uh, to manage our ads, to ask questions to, um, what I really want to see is I want to see people who are on the cutting edge, who are thought leaders and they have all of this knowledge. All of their knowledge can be synthesized into a chat bot. I would love it if I could get, uh, and I'm pretty sure this is something you can already do, but I could have open AI go and listen to every one of my 110 podcast episodes synthesize everything I've, I've given it as advice. And now anyone who wants to learn about LinkedIn ads can go to my chat bot and say, what would AJ advise me to do in this case? And it just tells you. So that's kind of my dream world. I don't want to take anyone's time. I want access to their knowledge. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Valuable. AJ, you always lead me to an emergency room. I need to spend time <laughs> to consume all this information to figure out what I need to change. Tell the best way how to keep learning from you, how to reach out to you, how to follow you. Uh, if you go and search for me on LinkedIn, uh, AJ Wilcox, I'm, I'm going to pop right up. Uh, that's, you know, follow me there. That's one of the best ways. I, I'm also the host of the LinkedIn ads show. So if you're a podcast listener, I highly recommend go check out the show. If you're not a podcast listener, we actually launched a community about two months ago uh, where it's just a, it, it's a low cost community that where you get access to other like-minded LinkedIn ads pros, um, plus access to our, our courses. We have four courses that take you from like no knowledge of LinkedIn ads whatsoever, all the way to being full expert. And all of that's included at a, a really low monthly cost. It's like 79 bucks a month gets you access to the community and the courses. So if that's interesting, that's at fanatics.b2linked.com. Nice, nice. Yeah, I recommend to anyone to take the course to follow AJ because I follow. I need these valuable bombs. I recommend to anyone to follow too because you can learn a lot more. And yeah, to think how you can adapt LinkedIn ads to your marketing campaigns. Okay, guys, love you. See you.